so my name is Peter Beck, I'm a researcher at Nesta. Um, Nesta is a charity based in the UK with the mission to support innovation and creativity within the UK. Um, we do that through four different ways. So um, through practical programs where we support people with great ideas to experiment with how to develop those ideas and scale them up. Through skills where we help people develop the skills and capacities to do innovation. Through in impact investments where we invest in social ventures that have a social as well as, as a financial return on investment. And finally, where I sit at Nesta, which is the policy and research team, which is Nesta's think tank, if you want. Okay, and uh, you, uh, today you, you, you shared your story at, at, at the Cross Source Week. Uh, for your own research, uh, what you say that the research is, 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 is uh, that, that the reality is always ahead on research. Yeah. How does this uh, come? Well, I think. So in the project called Digital Social Innovation, we're looking at trying to define what is digital social innovation, who's doing it, and how can policy and kind of funding better support it. And of course, it's grassroots, it's very early stage thing, uh, trend. And it, it is it's the fact that up until now, researchers and policymakers haven't really given that much attention to the field. But there's been all this activity happening around open hardware, making communities, open data, and so on. And now it's starting to kind of grow to a scale where it becomes really interesting and could actually really benefit society at a scale. So now we need to understand what it is, but there's so much stuff out there. And I guess the big challenge for us and for other people interested in it is how do we come up with the language to talk about it? Yeah, yeah. And, and with the research, do you also practice what you preach? Do you also use crowdsourcing and crowdfunding in your own research? We definitely do crowdsourcing. So our website was called digitalsocial.eu, which is trying to map organizations and people around Europe working on um, digital social innovation. It's a, it's a crowdsource map, it's a crowd map, where people create their own profiles, let us know who they work with, where they work, and so on. Uh, we don't use crowdfunding, uh, we are, we're funded by the European Commission, but we do talk about crowdfunding as a kind of a key uh, enabler for a lot of digital social innovation, because it's often the first early stage funding for a lot of these projects. Okay, and, and uh, what were your key insights from the research? Well, I think there's two ways of talking about key, uh, key kind of findings. The first is trying to, this thing I talked about earlier, around kind of come up with a language to talk about it. And I think in that way we come up with a way of talking about it, talking about four different types of tech technological trends that drive DSI. So they are kind of open hardware, open networks, open knowledge, and open data. And that's become the first big, big way for us to kind of define the area. Secondly, then is what have we learned from looking at all these organizations and all the data we captured on digitalsocial.eu. And there, I think the big finding is, it's a rapidly growing community, but the majority of practice is very small scale and often people are disconnected. So you have loads of pockets of activity all over, all over Europe, but nothing really connected. And often no cooperation between cities, regions, lo local or central governments, or the European Commission. Yeah. And I think the big recommendation is how can we better create those connections? And secondly, people really struggle with doing it. Often doing digital is incredibly hard for social innovators. And I think there's a big challenge for people who normally do digital, do social innovation to understand all the opportunities in doing digital. And you said that uh, it's hard to, to, to connect uh, all these people. And uh, uh, what way are you going to do this? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think, first of all, the website we created uh, it, it's, it's a kind of living network where people can see other people in their area, so like their local area or their country working on a particular field or same area. But equally, you can also see people who are interested in the same subject as you. So I work on open data for health, and you can filter all the information on the map to mm -hmm. find other organizations. And that's the first way. Secondly, we're doing events like this where we try to bring people together. Like we try and create the network in face-to-face -face meetings of people who care about this or want to get engaged. Um, so I think they're the two first, first things. Secondly is to try and bring this on the agenda for policymakers and governments, is to say there's all these people in your local area who do all these uh, social innovations that have a potential to help you deliver a better city or a better, better society, and you should work with them and connect with them. So in many ways, it's not Nesta's or our research project's job to, to bring them together. It is the organizations around Europe whom they deliver value and benefit for. Yeah, and, and um, what we also saw also in the other presentation was the, 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 uh, uh, the problem with connecting the existing and the new economy. Yeah. Uh, what are your uh, experience with that? Uh, well, <laughs> that, that, that's such a big question. I guess the existing economy and talk about crowdfunding, crowdsourcing is still the kind of by far kind of what the mainstream kind of activity and I think what, we, what we're starting to see is slowly crowdfunding platforms, the crowdfunding platforms starting to displace existing way, types of practice. Mm -hmm. But we equally we know that the main way we uh, do democracy is elections every four years. It's not crowdsourced policy platforms. The main way businesses get financed is through the banks. It's not through crowdfunding and so on. But we're st we're, of course, we're seeing an increased activity in all these platforms. So I guess it won't be more than five years before we see digital social innovation, grassroots, bottom-up kind of so innovation using technology 
displacing mainstream platforms, be that around funding or around democracy or policy making. So you really believe from the bottom up uh, way? Yeah, bottom up way, but, 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 but I guess it's just the, what's the tipping point? Where, where, when can the existing old economy, if you want, no longer deliver value and quality to citizens? And when, it, and when will it become displaced by newer models that deliver something better in a cheaper, better way, right? And uh, you said uh, in five years? I think in five years we'll see the first signs of kind of big, big institutional change, yeah. yeah. Not, not in all areas, but in, in one area, in one country. Yeah. So I think we've heard from Open Ministry in Finland, for example, around how they're starting to have success with crowdsourcing policies from Finnish citizens and directly to the parliament instead of having elections every four, four years, right? And that's the first hint of this, this kind of new economy, a new way of doing things, changing stuff at a system level. Yeah, cool. Looking forward for the next uh, 10 years. Yeah, yeah super. Yeah, thank you for the interview. Thank you, Norris. Nice.